It's time for the next step, querying data from the database itself. The good news is that I've done so much stuff in these videos already, this is actually gonna be relatively easy. There's almost nothing new to learn here. It's just putting some of the pieces we've seen previously together in a slightly different way. I need to look at routing again, so I need a new route in my server, but instead of app.post, I wanna use app.get. And then I'm gonna to need to use the fetch function again, only this time, I'll go back and use the simpler version of fetch for a simple get request, just to get information from the server itself. Finally, I need to find functionality in the database system itself, NEDB, that allows me to query the database, to find something. And in fact, there is a function called find. I'm just gonna use find to ask for everything from the database, but you can also use find with search terms and other kinds of ways to ask for certain key aspects or parts of the database itself. Let's check in on where we are with the code. Since the last episode, I also did my homework and I added a text field here where you could write your name or your mood or some kind of keyword associated with that latitude and longitude. So when I hit submit, both the latitude and longitude and my current mood is sent and returned back to me. So if I change this to kitten, I will also see now that that comes back to me. And I can go look in the database itself and I can see that these two entries with two different moods have been put into the database. I also made some small improvements into the server, really minor things. One is I just took the request body and inserted that into the database itself. Creating this additional object where I'm duplicating some of the information was kind of unnecessary, so this is much simpler now. The request comes in, I add the timestamp to that object, I insert that into the database and send everything back to the client. Finally, I have a new web page all.html. So I'm, I, what I, I'm gonna demonstrate to you how to query everything from the database and display it. I could do it on this page as well. I could have a single page app. I could hide DOM elements and load other ones. There's so many different ways I could design this, but I think an, a simple way for me to just now go to slash all.html. That HTML file is there in the public directory. And at some point, of course, I probably want to move my JavaScript into separate JavaScript files, maybe have some CSS files. But it, this is not really a video series about web design or proper web development. I'm just looking at the pieces of the puzzle and how to work with data and APIs in this context. Ultimately, what I want to do is from the client, I want to make a GET request to a route on the server and have that route return all the data from the database. And the way I do that is with fetch. This is much simpler. I don't need to set the method explicitly to post because the default is get and I can just give it that path. And I could use a different path. Like I could set something up, a different route in the server. I could set something called like slash all or all the data. <laughs> um, but I think I'm just gonna use API. Um, be, the interesting thing is I can reuse the API route because I used it previously as a post. So calling fetch with a get to API will be handled in a different function in the server itself. I'm gonna say fetch slash API and I'm gonna put this in an async function called get data. And I'm going to say response equals await that. Then I'm gonna say data equals await response.json, this is everything we've done before, multiple times now, and then console.log data. Then I wanna execute that function. Of course, if I go to the browser now and hit refresh, it's gonna say, hey, it doesn't find that because I haven't set up that route. There's no such thing as a route called API that handles a get request. I can go into the server and just like there's app.post slash API, now I'm gonna add an app.get slash API. And this is gonna look exactly the same. There is a callback function with a request and a response. Oops, and this should be lowercase t. Just to test if this is working, I'm gonna say response.json, uh, and then I'm just gonna put some arbitrary uh, you know, test, you know, one, two, three. I'm just gonna send that data back. So at least now, I should see this message logged in the client. So I'm, I'm not, I don't have Nodemon running right now, so I have to manually restart the server, go back to the client, hit refresh, and there you go. I see, I immediately make that get request and I immediately see the response. We're really close to being done with this feature now. All I need to do is actually query the database and send that stuff back, not some arbitrary test one, two, three.
All of the information for how to do this is in the NEDB documentation under finding documents. So there's a find function that lets me find stuff in the database. And there's all sorts of ways I could use find to find a lot of things, find one to look for one thing. There's all sorts of comparison operators I can use. But ultimately, all I want to do is say find everything. And so to do that, I say database dot find, I would give it an object here, which is a way of modifying that search, but I'm just going to give it an empty object because I want to look for everything, and then I have a callback. That callback has two arguments, error and the data itself. And what I can actually do right here is just say, send that data. Look at this. I just want to call find have the data come back, and then pass the data to the client. I could do more here, but this is all I need to do. And I probably should do some error handling. Like I might say, if error, just uh, say response.end, and then return. Like, get out of here. Maybe I should console log the error. Maybe I should send the error to the client. But this should like sort of like clean everything up and just go away. I don't think I'm in an error, though. Hopefully, I'm just going to send back all the data in the database. Um, let me rerun the server, go back to the client, hit refresh, and there we go. Look, there is, here is all the data. Rainbow and kitten. This is the stuff that I've entered into the database. I can go back to the index.html page and I can say, you know, cupcake and unicorn and enter these in. And then I can go back and refresh this page and suddenly I now have four entries in the database that I'm retrieving. In a way, I'm really done now with this particular feature because I'm mostly leaving it up to you to figure out the design of the web page and how you want to present that data. But let me at least do something to get that started. So I need to, before I leave you, do something more than just console logging that data. Let me actually attempt to display it here on the web page itself. I'm going to use some basic native JavaScript to make some DOM elements that I can place here to get, to get you started. Looking in the code, this is the place where I want to create those DOM elements. I want to display everything that's here in the console, but I want the user to be able to see it on the web page. So to do that, and I'm just going to use some native JavaScript, which is not a thing I know very well, and I'm probably going to make some mistakes here, but I'm going to use a for loop. Uh, I can use a for of loop as a way of iterating through every element of an array. So I'm going to say for item of data. So each element of the array is now in this variable item, and I can make a div. So I'm going to make a div as like a holder. Let's call it root uh, equals document dot create element div. So this will be like the root, the div that's going to hold all the pieces of data that's in item. And then let me make a, another div called uh, mood, which is also a div, document create element div. Then what I want to do is say mood.textContent. Now, some people do use inner HTML, and I'm guilty of this, doing this many times. But you've got to really watch out, uh, because if I've got user-entered stuff, it can be a security issue to use inner HTML, because then code could be executed and that sort of thing. So I'm going to be safe and use text content and say this is a string. I'm going to use a string literal here, saying mood, colon, and then item.mood, so grab the data from the item variable. Uh, then let's make another uh, div uh, called a geo for the geolocation. I'm going to say geo text content equals uh, the item latitude, comma, the item longitude, and then I'm going to just paste in the degree symbol. It's not in my <laughs> clipboard. Hold on a second. I've got the degree symbol in my clipboard now, so I can paste that in here. Then let's make one last div uh, with, I probably should check to see that this is going to work, but let's make one last div ah, with a date. One last div with a date. So I will say date equals document.create and create element div, and the text content of the date will be uh, the timestamp. But let me say, let me make the date string a variable uh, and say new date and say uh, pass in item timestamp and then say dot two, uh, this is new date, not data, and say this is two local uh, string. So this is basically taking that timestamp, which was just the number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970, converting it back into a nice string that gives the real, the, the date in my local time zone. And then I can put 
uh, date string in there, which is a little bit silly if that's all I'm putting in there. I could just say that the text content equals date string directly. Then I want to take the, um, and let's actually, I, I, this is a little bit silly, but let me do this. So basically, I have these three divs all go inside root. Mood, so I can use the append function. And append will actually take multiple elements uh, as arguments and append them all. So they all want to append to, to root. And then, and I probably should do this after just to be sort of logical here. And then once I've appended them all, then I just want to say document.body.append root. So maybe I want to be more thoughtful about how I'm organizing my HTML page, but this will give me a basic idea here. Let me make a div for each one of these data points. Let me put all those divs into a container called root, fill in the text content, and then append them to the page, and then just say a little native JavaScript DOM manipulation prayer and move on to the page and hit refresh. Oh, huh, wow, I cannot believe that worked. Of course, now you see uh, the level of my talent in web design, I've just got this very crude, raw list of stuff. But now is an opportunity for you, the viewer, to make something of this. So uh, in terms of moving on to the next step, uh, before you move on to the next step, I mean, ultimately this project is done in many ways. I have implemented all of the pieces. I have client-side JavaScript that's collecting some data. That data is then passed off to the server, saved to a database, and also in the client, I can make a request to look at everything that's in the database. So this would work if I deployed this to some server somewhere and let people use it. I now have this app. Now there's no user accounts, there's many things missing, but the sort of story of this project is complete. The things that I think you would want to consider adding here are, well, maybe there's some other kind of interesting data that you want to capture about yourself through this web application. Uh, one of the things that I want to do is just add an image from a webcam. I want to use the P5 library, which is a creative coding JavaScript library that I use in tons of videos and uh, uh, on this channel that I have. So I want to add that in, but maybe you want to connect to another API, get the weather information. You might think about what kind of data, but also, you might really want to think about how you're presenting this back. So maybe you want to think about the layout, add some CSS. You might also want to think about the navigation overall. I mean, right now I just have these two pages, right? I have this page for entering data, and that's just at the root index of HTML. And then I just have to know to go to all.html to get to this page. But maybe there should be some overall navigation between these two pages. Maybe you want to change this into a single page web app where everything is on one page. So play around with this a little bit. And just really as a bonus, I'm going to come back and add one more feature. So in the next video, I'm going to use the P5 library to get an image from the webcam, uh, have that image passed to the server and saved in the database as well. How I do that, well, I'll get into that in the next video, and that'll be the sort of little uh, button to put on this to wrap it up in a nice bow and complete this project.